Nathan and Noah are identical. They're monochorionic, diamniotic twins. Being so premature, they had all the odds stacked up against them. But you look at them today and you couldn't tell that they spent so much time in hospital, particularly Ethan. We just love them so much. Walking out of Grace after Ethan's six month checkup with a happy, healthy boy just felt so good. It's funny some of the little things you remember now that we're getting ready to leave. Like my office being a couch. Or stealing a moment's rest anywhere you could. The endless cups of coffee or the sound of a microwave. Now we're just waiting for him to recover. Poor Ethan is heavily sedated, unresponsive. He even looks visibly different. The good news is that the surgery has been a success. Ethan's in surgery right now. It's so hard, but looking after Noah is helping take our minds off things. It's a big day. Ethan's just been weighed and he's hit the magic three kilo mark. This means he's finally big enough for his next surgery. We're nervous and proud. So we found out Ethan's condition means more surgery to join his esophagus together. They won't know until he's in surgery if this will work. Even then, stretching it could cause a rip or a tear. On top of this, we have to wait until he grows to three kilos. He's been on CPAP for about a month now. He has so many tubes and cords attached to him. There's cords monitoring his heart rate, a red light attached to his foot to monitor oxygen. His Repogal tube needs flushing every 15 minutes. In the middle of all of this, he just looks so content. The giraffe bed has been his home for most of his stay. He loves it because it's so warm and it blocks out the hospital noise. The monitors and alarms are constantly going off. I can hear the beeping in my head for hours after. We're getting used to untangling the cords and resetting the alarm. It's reassuring seeing him protected in his own little world. Life has become a series of routines, like washing our hands over and over again, or changing his nappy, or the oxygen cord on his foot. You do it without thinking. There's this huge long tunnel that connects the two hospitals. I'd hate to think how many times I've walked up and down it. Sometimes you don't see a single soul, but it was never as scary as the first time when Ethan was transferred. We sensed every little bump, but he was safe and sound in his little world. You just want to pick them up and hold them, but they need to sleep so they get stronger. Ethan's in surgery today. He can't swallow, so he needs an operation to put a feeding tube directly into his stomach. He's only six days old. They're hooked up to so many cables, but resting peacefully in their humidity cribs. I was able to slide my hand through the little window so I could touch them. They just look so tiny and so skinny, but they're beautiful and so perfect. The boys were delivered this morning by an emergency caesarean. We've had such a journey to get to this stage, wondering if they would make it. Now they're here, but they've been whisked away. The next couple of weeks are going to be touch and go. We just need to focus one day at a time and then one week at a time. It's been a surreal day. One moment we're sitting in the doctor's office, the next minute she's calling the hospital in front of us and we're driving in. Emma's only 22 weeks pregnant. At the scan today, the sonographer couldn't see the stomach bubble on one of the twins. We're being referred to a high-risk obstetrician. A bit concerned, to say the least. Big surprise, we've just found out at today's scan that we're expecting identical twins. So excited, but a bit nervous about what lays ahead. 